And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? As you might guess, this one is me also moaning and groaning about the disaster that just went down in Wisconsin. You know, people power versus money power suffered a setback in spite of the fact that Governor Scott Walker, how could that big a dick get anybody to vote for him? I mean, he got 200,000 more votes than the first time and won by a bigger percentage. Perhaps somebody should have thought of saying, hey, maybe we should nominate somebody besides the guy who already lost to run against him. But now, look where the dominoes may fall. It will embolden people you know, like, like Chris Christie, who actually makes Walker look like a nice guy, and Governor Snyder of Michigan, and others to have more open season on public employee unions, as though somehow the biggest threat to our economy and national security is firemen, teachers, and their own beloved police departments. Should we give up? No. This hurts bad, but it just means you widen the base of the pyramid and keep fighting. There was one little silver lining where some of the state senators, or at least one, got recalled in Wisconsin, and now it's going to be harder for Walker to push this stuff through. And what would have happened if the voter initiative was to recall the law instead of the governor? Just like Ronald McReagan and Clown Prince W. Bush, the man, the telegenic, can you believe that, man was more popular than their policies because a lot of people didn't even know what their policies were. In Ohio, overturning roughly these same horrible anti-union laws worked because there wasn't anything on the books where you could recall a governor, and that may be the way to go in the future. Go against the part that's actually hurting real people. And Michael Moore made the well-taken point that, uh, well, basically, welcome to the Citizens United State of America, where big oligarch money rules the roost. And this is slowly penetrating enough people that even some bigwigs are now joining the fight for a constitutional amendment to show that corporations are not people and that we've got to get rid of this level of corruption that no other established democracy even tolerates at this point. And among the people who've signed up in support of a constitutional amendment, almost every Democrat in the Senate, 24 total, including people like Dianne Feinstein is even in favor of it, Max Baucus in Montana who killed the health care bill is even in favor of it, the senator from Wall Street, Charles Schumer is even in favor of it, which makes it all the more interesting when I read this list provided by Public Citizen whose name is not on the list. No Barbara Boxer, no Mark Udall from Colorado, no Patty Murray in Washington, no Harry Reid, no surprise there, no John Kerry, and no Barack Obama. And that becomes another point of why Wisconsin failed. Where was the Barack star? He could have come in there and had a public rally in the big football stadium for the Badgers in Madison. It would have been filled and told everybody there, go out and get all your friends to vote this clown out of office. After all, the dominoes can either fall in one direction or they're going to fall in another one now, it looks like. He could have done the same thing in Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Come one, come all. Come see the Barack star. Tell Wisconsin how to, you know, put some of that hope and change into actual practice. Maybe that's why he wasn't there is because up top they don't want any real people power to actually have any power. There's a piece in Fire Dog Lake that laid this out brilliantly. He even forbid Vice President Biden to go speak at the Capitol when people were occupying it in early 2011. What was up with that? Oh, we can't go to bat for recalling Walker. We might lose. Fox might make fun of us. You don't worry about losing. When something is right, you fight until you win, okay? No, this was anti-people power. And another example of failure to seize the initiative. Is this incompetence or is this another example where the fix is in? Where once again, the supposed Democratic Party, who's so anti-democracy they sued like crazy to keep Ralph Nader off the ballot in state after state in 2004, they don't like democracy any more than the British Labor Party likes laborers. 
But anyway, they become really, really skilled at playing the loser, making perfectly good ideas look wimpy and bad when they run people like Walter Mondale, Michael Dukakis, Al Gore's actual campaign, John Kerry, and many, many local examples. Let the thug set the agenda, then play half-hearted defense. More examples. If they had taken up the Bush tax cuts before the 2010 election, you would not have that orange-colored turtley guy being Speaker of the House right now. You wouldn't have that. Then, Copenhagen, time to get serious about climate collapse. Who tries to sabotage and water down the whole thing? Obama talks a great game about climate collapse, but doesn't actually do anything. In fact, does the opposite. Need I go on again about how angry I am there's been no attempt to prosecute the Bush administration war criminals for war crimes so they're all scot-free to get more powerful later to the point where there's all this serious talk now that if Romney becomes president, his secretary of state is going to be John Bolton. And then there's the lesser known ones like when Bush laid off all these specialists at the Internal Revenue Service who were specialists in investigating and auditing rich people collecting large amounts of delinquent revenue for our government. And, and instead concentrating more on auditing the little guy. You're trying to balance the budget? Is this really in the government's best interest to audit me for the fourth or fifth time instead of Sheldon Adelson or the Koch brothers or somebody like that? You don't even need Congress to fix that, you just do it. And why is Obama and crew joining in this gang going postal on the post office? There isn't some big grassroots movement to get rid of the post office because it's threatening everything, God, mom, and apple pie or whatever. They're saying, oh, it's like social security, it's broke, it should be turned over to the privateers, you know, a synonym for pirate, privateer. They're talking about closing th almost 4,000 post offices over 250 mail processing plants, all in rural areas and poor neighborhoods like Hunters Point in San Francisco that are dependent on things like the post office. No, 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 you got to go miles and pay up the ass to UPS or FedEx Clinkos or whatever. That is the scam. And why is the post office losing money? Well, because there was a law put through, I think it was in 2007, saying that unlike any other corporation or government agency, the Postal Service has to prepay all the medical benefits for its, all its employees who will be working there for the next 75 years, including tens if not hundreds of thousands of people who haven't even been born yet. So the USPS Inspector General says, hey, wait a minute, we're not broke. We stashed away $326 billion to, quote, address future liabilities. Here's another smoking hot election issue. People like the post office. They also are in favor both of choice and of choice to recreationally smoke marijuana or use it as medicine. So suddenly we have a born-again right-wing drug warrior instead. And of course, there's a little known quote from the Obama administration after the Keystone Pipeline was not canceled but postponed, that they're looking into an alternate route. So watch out on that one. And the other big one now, of course, is sure, they're bitching and moaning about all these attempts to throw voters off the rolls because a couple dozen people might have fraudulently voted. Why not go on the offense and investigate the stolen elections of 2000, 2002, and 2004 because a lot of those digital touchscreen monkey business voting machines are still out there and can and will be used again or once again is the fix in. So, won't even go to bat in Wisconsin. Why vote for these people? Why vote at all? Why vote at all? Again, local elections, it matters to get good people in in city councils, state legislatures, you know, the school boards so the Rick Santora band doesn't take it over instead. Ballot initiatives like medical marijuana, rent control, and the joy of voting down football stadiums with luxury boxes. One of many reasons to keep paying attention and put people power in the spirit of Occupy into practice, but for crying out loud, right now they're making it all about Obama, and even if he so quote unquote wins again, an awful lot of the most uh, downtrodden people in this country lose.